Right. Okay. So, uh, fresh out of the oven, the most recent news, right, which is uh, the two land plots that were tendered, uh, and the results being announced, right, just last night. So this is the first one, located in Tengah Garden Walk. Uh, for those of you who don't know where it is, uh, you are not alone because I also don't know where it is, right? I had to go and find. Later I will show you the, the location, then you, you will understand why probably nobody knows where it is. Lah. Uh, so it translates, the land sale price translates to about 603 PSF per plot ratio. Uh, just for a basis of comparisons, the most recent EC launch uh, prov province, right, is uh, at 566 PSF per plot ratio, and they sold that at uh, 1147 PSF on average. So the difference, right, between the uh, land sale price, right, is about 6%, so you just plug that in into. Uh, the basis from which province sold at, right? We are looking at about 1,200 PSF, and this is an executive condominium. Uh, so usually three bedroom premiums are sized about 1,000 square feet. So for a good basis of comparison or for a good gauge, we are looking at a three bedroom at about 1.2 million for an executive condominium. Yeah. Next, right? So we are looking at the location. So location, uh, the circle, all oh right, the circle is not there, never mind. Uh, the triangle, uh, the orange triangle that you see, that is the land plot. The closest MRT, and this is pretty zoomed out, nah, it's uh, Bukit Gombak and Bukit Panjang. Uh, it's so ulu that they haven't even made the, made the, built the road yet lah, from, the, from the piece of land out. Yeah, next. Uh, which is the, the more shocking one and the more hotly uh, anticipated one. It's the results from the Amokyo Avenue one uh, land, land tender, right? Uh, so we talked about this site a while back, yeah? Uh, and we were saying that there are some of the things that we want to look out for and which will give us a clear indication of what would happen in the future, right? Things like how many developers will be bidding for the land uh, and how much would they be bidding for, yeah? So uh, the winning bid went to UOL and Singapore Land, right? Uh, at a winning bid of 1118 PSF per plot ratio, which is basically their, their cost price of the land. Uh, to give you again a basis of comparison, the latest launch at One North Eden uh, was priced at, uh, they bought that land at 1000 PSF per plot ratio uh, and it sold at an average 1995 uh, PSF, right? So assuming an 11% higher, uh, which no, the 11% higher land price right, will translate to an estimated P sale PSF of 2,200. This is pretty in line with what the uh, uh, experts are anticipating like if you read the papers today. And this is 2,200 PSF for Ang Mo Kyo, okay? Let that sink in uh, for a moment. Uh. Uh, this price will push us to the next benchmark price, right? So the next, the, the other point that we are looking at, right, is which developers, right, uh, uh, are bidding and how many developers are bidding. So one thing we notice is that there is an increase in the number of joint ventures, right. Uh, the first of, uh, the first three bids, all, all joint ventures and all from the big boys, our UOL, Singapore Land, MCL, CDL, Far East, right. And if you actually split up the joint ventures, uh, uh, you will, the, we will hit close to 20 developers bidding. And if you have watched or followed us in our previous video, the highest number of bids that were tendered in the previous cycle was 24 bids uh, for the land plot that is now, that is today, Daintree Tree Residences. So 20 versus 24, very, very close. What does it show, right? Uh, several things. Developers are extremely bullish about the market condition, about the whole COVID situation, right? Uh, the other 
point is that obviously they are land bank. Hi kid, hello. Uh, their land bank is dwindling uh, significantly, uh, which is why most of them are out in the market. And another thing, right? I'm not sure whether it's something that you look out for, uh, which is something that we uh, is a point that quite a lot of people talked about sometime in the past, which was like a lot of Chinese developers coming in and beating up the, the price of the land, which is not what we see. Yeah, these guys are our own, right? Uh, Singapore developers that are in the market and they are the ones that are winning the bids. So uh, a couple of things, interesting points to, to see, right? Um, they have also, right, uh, basically figured out uh, how to make money out uh, how to make money with the new measures lah, which is why you see they are more confident to come into the market to bid uh, today right which is you see a lot of joint ventures what i feel what we feel uh, is that they are hedging their risk reducing their risk by going into joint ventures uh, because of all the new absd requirements and things like that yeah okay uh, enough on that let me talk about let me show you the location. Uh. It is not exactly near Amokyo MRT. It is near the future Mayflower MRT, right? But uh, if you compare it to the, the, if you want to take the closest existing MRT is Amokyo, it's actually on the extreme end of Amokyo. So not, uh, not the most convenient as is today. Lah. And then uh, just for comparison's sake and also just to make things clearer why we feel that this price really will bring the whole market into the new benchmark uh, I've put in the future uh, developments right which are the three recent land sales right uh, Amokyo this one uh, we have North Tumberland Road uh, which is near Farrer Road uh, that Farrer Park sorry uh, that one was uh, won by, I believe, uh, CDL and MCL. And then we have Tanamera Kachil, uh, which was won by MCC, right? So all these, right, uh, the two OCR properties at Tanamera and Amokyo, they're going to hit very, very close to 2000 PSF already, right? And uh, you, because they are not launched yet, right? So we can't really compare that with the actual uh, sale PSF, but you just need to look at the land PSF per plot ratio, the developers cost price for their land to really see this new benchmark prices being hit. Yeah, 1188 for Amokyo, it is more than what UOL has paid for Avenue South residences uh, in the RCR at 1138. Uh, uh, just a couple of years back, I think, I believe it was two years back or maybe two to three years back. They're about very, very close to what CEL paid for Copa and Newton, 1192 uh, PSF PPR. Uh, you want to compare? You can compare to Penrose at 732. Uh, that was just launched earlier this year. Today, OCI is 1188. Um, the value proposition becomes very, very clear now that we, have, now that we put uh, these two prices, the future prices and the current prices uh, together. The, the value proposition of the existing developments become very, very clear. Yeah. So uh, on to the next one, which is one of my favorite, one of our favorite charts, right? How does this whole thing, uh, how do you make sense of all these prices uh, or what is happening uh, today? Yeah. So to help us understand what is happening today or forecast what's going to happen in the future, what we always like to do is to compare to what has happened in the past, right? So this chart, if you follow me, uh, um, the blue line is uh, developers unsold inventory. Yeah. So in the previous cycle, in the 161718 cycle, when the developers inventory dipped below 20,000, the developers started coming online to start uh, doing on blocks and also start to bid aggressively for land, right? And then what happened? Once they started to bid, there was a delayed reaction in the blue, the orange line, which is the property price index. So you see, once they dip below the twenty thousand dollar, the twenty thousand unsold units mark, right? The land price started to see a sharp increment about three to four quarters later, right? Why so? 
right? It's because once they bid the land, while right, those of you who are following us in the no one, we will know lah. We will reasonably know how to expect that uh, the prices further down the road is definitely going to come up. Right, but if you don't follow property news or you don't know how to analyze these prices, you will only realize it once the developers start to launch, and once you start to see prices caveated, to realize that a, hey, wow, the price is so much more, right? And also, right, property price index is always retrospective, so they only capture the price increase after the developers have bid the land, prepare the showroom, launch the development for sale, then they'll start to caveat. So that kind of explains why uh, you only see there's a laggard reaction in the property price index versus when the developers start to come in and bid for land. So today, what's happened? Today, the developers unsold inventory. It's very, very close to dipping below the 20,000 mark. It's at the 21,000, 20,000 mark as of today. Uh, second quarter 2020. 20, yeah? uh, 2021, second quarter 2021. Okay. So then now we see what's happening, right? Amokyo, right? The number of bids coming up to 20. Very, very close to what's happened last year. So if you are asking me, right? If you are asking me what's happening uh, today, it will be a very similar case to what has happened in 2016, 17, 18. Yeah, it is almost a exact same situation. The land, invent the developers inventory are dipping, there's pent up demand, they're gonna come back in and start bidding up the market and move prices to the next benchmark price. So if the market today, you feel it's hot, right? I don't think we are seeing the full uh, impact of all this as yet, okay? So we digress. This is not exactly what the topic was about, but I think uh, uh, once I saw that article, once I saw the results come out yesterday, I, I thought that yeah, it was uh, important to share that with our followers. Lah. 